Man, the internet loves a skincare trend. Slugging, glazed donut skin, glass skin, mochi skin, skin cycling. Here we are headed into February of 2023 and the latest skincare trend crossing TikTok is skin flooding. Touted as an intervention for dry winter skin to help get you back on track. We're gonna describe what this entails. Should you be doing it? Should you run out and buy a bunch of skincare products? Short answer is no. But we're gonna talk about it in today's video. Comment below if you have ever had dry skin. It's a really common problem. If you've never had dry skin, I got news for you. You're gonna have it at some point in your life. You know the phrase, two things are guaranteed in life, death and taxes. They need to add a third and that is dry skin. At some point in your life, I guarantee you're gonna have a bout of dry skin somewhere on your body. Maybe a little patch, if not a full blown bout of like a dry face, dry elbows, dry knees, dry feet, dry hands, it happens. Skin is a large organ, it has a lot of work to do, it's not perfect, and at times it is known to lose water, trans epidermal water loss. There are so many different situations in life where this can pop up, and what a great opportunity to come up with trends, products, sell you stuff that might be helpful or just might be unnecessary. I've seen a lot of posts on my For You page over on TikTok, hashtag skin flooding, and I had to do a bit more of a deep dive into this. It's like, what, what are people coming up with? Skin flooding is a winter skincare trend that is aimed at improving dry skin, relieving the symptoms of dry skin, which can include sensitivity, burning, stinging, flakiness, an overall tight sensation, not tolerating products or active ingredients. It's not just a symptom of winter though. It can happen again at any point in your life. What does skin flooding entail? The principle behind skin flooding is to flood your skin with moisture. It essentially entails first, of course, starting on a clean base, washing your face, then after you rinse the cleanser off to a damp face, apply hydrating ingredients. Try the skin flooding technique with me for the first time. First thing, you have to start with a fresh, clean face. Once you're done washing your face, you keep it wet. Don't dry it off. I know it's weird, but that's part of the technique. It's supposed to allow the skin to absorb more product, even for the product to penetrate into the skin better. And I'm going in with my Kiehl's Ultra Facial Moisturizing Cream. Definitely feels like slimy and silky in a good way. I live in Chicago, so it's super cold. My skin gets very, very dry in the winter time, so this is really supposed to help. Next, I'm going in with the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Advanced Repair Barrier Cream. This is brand new and it's a balm to cream formula. It's suitable for very dry and sensitive skin and it relieves dryness up to 10 layers deep in your skin. So far, I'm loving this technique and I think that these Kiehl's products really work well with it. I highly recommend checking out this new barrier cream. It feels amazing. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Are you going, isn't this what a basic skincare routine entails anyway? Yes. Long story short, but they take it a little bit further. If your skin is dry and tight like mine, try a TikTok hack I spotted, which I'm calling skin flooding. Flooding your skin with moisture. Cleanse with something gentle, and when your skin is still wet, apply a hydrating serum. When your skin is still a bit damp from that, apply a niacinamide serum, and if you want, you can follow with a moisturizer. My skin is much better for it, and I really think it's helping with my breakouts too and that they're layering different hydrating products on anywhere from one to two serums and a moisturizer. And I've noticed a trend where a lot of folks are taking a hydrating mist like the thermal spring water sprays and spritzing their face in between these layers. The goal being to literally flood the top layers of the skin with moisture. Is this a good thing? Should you be doing this? Should you be aggressively attacking hydration to this extreme? Most of these skincare routines focus, again, on hydrating ingredients, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, which can be helpful for the skin barrier and is moisturizing. I've seen some focusing around glycerin. Then the final step, of course, is to apply a thicker moisturizing cream to lock in all of this hydration. Why would you want to increase the water content of your skin? That's actually the point of moisturizing, believe it or not, is to increase the water content of the stratum corneum, the top layer of your skin. The stratum corneum, the very top layer of your skin, it becomes dry and dehydrated in dry skin conditions. 
conditions. The top layer of your skin is called the epidermis, and it's actually a few different layers, and the topmost layer of the epidermis is the stratum corneum. Moisture content there is key to healthy barrier function, keeping irritating stuff out, and keeping moisture in so everything's hydrated and functioning appropriately. Now, a healthy stratum corneum should have anywhere from 15 to 25% water content. Just below the stratum corneum, you have the stratum granulosum. In healthy skin, the junction between the stratum corneum and the stratum granulosum should contain roughly 40% water. Water is so important because the enzymes that control how things turn over and barrier function, they rely on water. When your skin barrier becomes disrupted from different environmental stressors, medical conditions, or just with age or underlying skin problems, well, the skin loses water. The stratum corneum starts to lose water, and that's what leads to dry skin and symptoms of sensitivity and barrier impairment. The end result of that is more irritating stuff gets in, the skin becomes dry, flaky, you lose more water. It's important to consider why you have dry skin. As I said at the beginning of the video, there's a good chance at some point in your life you're going to have some degree of dry skin. Even just chapped lips, that's dry skin. Check out my video on why you have dry skin. We go into it in a deep dive there. All the reasons why you might have dry skin. Age-related, environmental stressors, using too many products, dry skin secondary to an underlying medical condition. And for those of you in the back with oily skin, I have news for you. Dry skin can, does, and will impact you too. Just having oily skin does not excuse you from having dryness and the symptoms of dryness and issues around dry skin. The causes, symptoms, and severity of dry skin are incredibly variable. So as with everything you see on the internet, it is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Just because it's trendy does not mean it's going to be right for you or the practical approach to doing things. The goal behind skin flooding is to improve water content in the skin by layering more lightweight products onto damp skin. It enhances the penetration of ingredients that are aimed at improving water holding ability, hygroscopics, things like hyaluronic acid, or marine extracts, polyhydroxy acids, polyglutamic acid, PCA, urea, and then the final step in skin flooding is layering on a heavier, thicker, moisturizing cream or gel. It's gonna seal everything in. Now the occlusive properties of this final step is important because it essentially suppresses water loss from the skin. So all of that flooding that you just did, you're going to seal it in with the final moisturizing step. Moisturizers not only help to improve the water content, but by doing so, they actually help to improve skin's flexibility, to restore skin luminosity. You can appreciate a more glowing, radiant appearance to the skin simply by moisturizing. This is something that I wanna to emphasize to you guys. With all of the hype about different skin products and skincare ingredients. The most basic gratifying thing that you can do in your skincare routine, aside from of course protecting your skin from the sun with sunscreen, is to use a moisturizer. One of the most underrated aspects of consistent use of a moisturizer is that it helps with exfoliating the skin. There's this idea always online that you need to be exfoliating, that you need to use an exfoliant. Sure, many people benefit from using one, but not everyone needs to. Newsflash, the skin naturally exfoliates on its own. But that gets slowed down, delayed, impaired when your skin is dry. When the water content in the stratum corneum drops because of impairment and barrier function, well, the natural exfoliation processes that rely on that water they don't go very smoothly. That's why you get a rough skin texture. You get a buildup of flakiness, dry skin that can be rough. It makes your skin look dull, lifeless. And a lot of people might think, oh, I need to be exfoliating all of that off. But you can get very nice benefit in that situation by just using moisturizer consistently, improving water content, improving barrier function, everything gets back on track. Another underrated aspect to moisturizing is that it helps with barrier function, so ultimately that slows the penetration of things into the skin, which is important for alleviating issues around sensitivity. Many people who have sensitive skin, when their skin becomes dry and the barrier function is impaired, Stuff gets in, it burns, it stings, it's a lot more uncomfortable. You have flares of redness. This can be particularly an issue for people who have rosacea, and it can also be an issue for those of you who have acne. 
Uh, it can lead to irritation and subsequent worsening of redness. That irritation can drive more inflammation in the skin that leads to more breakouts and it leads to more post-acne hyperpigmentation, especially for those of you with deeper skin tones. Consistent use of a moisturizer will also not only smooth the skin surface out, but it plumps up the skin cells. They're hydrated. That helps slow penetration of things into the skin and it also helps to smooth out fine lines and wrinkles. Last week, I did a video reacting to some misinformation online about tretinoin. And if you go back to that video, we talked about some clinical studies using tretinoin. What's crystal clear from those papers, if you go back and look very carefully, is using a moisturizer will improve the look of fine lines because in those papers, they use a vehicle control. What I mean by that is they are comparing the effects of tretinoin, which is in a moisturizer, to that same moisturizer with no tretinoin. And if you actually look at the, at the research that they get, the people who use the control, the moisturizer alone with no tretinoin, that control group still gets improvement in the appearance of fine lines. Of course, it's greater when you add tretinoin, but it illustrates how valuable using moisturizer alone is. This is important for you as a consumer of skincare to always remember because oftentimes brands will present uh, data that they have collected on volunteers who have used their product and demonstrate an improvement in fine lines. And they'll attribute it to certain ingredients in the product that they have, but they almost never, I mean, I don't think they ever have a a control. They don't have a moisture, a boring moisturizer control. Uh, and so keep that in mind. You always have to kind of ask yourself, could I get there? Could I get that same amount of improvement just by consistently using my boring moisturizer? Now with dry skin conditions and with age and with certain underlying skin problems, there is an issue there with properly storing water in the skin. Some skin conditions like eczema, they have not only a defect in barrier function, meaning they're more prone to water loss, but they also have issues around the hygroscopic aspects of the skin barrier that really are key for, for holding in water. With age, we also lose some barrier function and our natural moisturizing factors, those hygroscopic ingredients that naturally make up our skin barrier, the levels of those also start to decline, so we're more vulnerable to water loss. So as I'm telling you how beneficial water is to the skin. I can see how the natural tendency would be, oh, well, by layering hydrating ingredients on and by flooding the skin with moisture, that is the best approach. But can you go too far with this? Can you get too much water by flooding the skin? You certainly can't have too much of a good thing. Hyperhydration of the stratum corneum actually impairs barrier function. It's this, it's this nice balance where too little water content in the stratum corneum leads to barrier impairment. The enzymes and things don't function properly. You get slowing of the exfoliation processes, buildup of dry skin, irritants get in more readily. However, on the other extreme of that, if you have too much saturation in the stratum corneum of water, if you, if you get to a certain point where it's just, as this trend implies, flooded, that too can impair barrier function. And I'll illustrate a clinical example of when this happens. Trench foot, you're like, what the heck? Yes, trench foot is a classic example of how overhydrating the stratum corneum can go awry. This was seen in soldiers who had prolonged immersion of the feet in damp conditions. They were wearing shoes that weren't necessarily, uh, you know, preventing water from entering. They sat there in water in, in their boots and the stratum corneum becomes hyperhydrated. And when that happens, especially the thick stratum corneum of the soles of the feet can lead to barrier impairment and in a really significant problem with the feet. Now, does that happen to the everyday person who goes a little bit overboard with moisturizing? No, you're not gonna develop trench foot of the face. So that's an example, but it's an extreme example that I seriously doubt most people could ever get to 
with just overdoing it with moisturizer, but you certainly can over moisturize, which brings me to my concern around this principle of skin flooding, is that one potential risk you might encounter here is that by adding all of these hydrating ingredients, especially if you're doing this method of misting the face in between each layer, which I have seen some people do, uh, you can get too much of a good thing, and that can actually end up enhancing penetration of things that might be irritating to you. For example, I see a lot of these routines using niacinamide. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of niacinamide, but some people find it burns, it stings, it's irritating. That's more likely to be the case when you are doing a routine such as this where you have so much hydration. It's going to enhance penetration. If your dry skin condition is secondary to the irritating effects of a medication or a topical ingredient like tretinoin or benzoyl peroxide, you might end up aggravating that symptom even further by all of this hydration further driving penetration of that ingredient into the skin you might end up getting even more irritation in the long run in the case of rosacea i would i would be a little bit more conservative here with not going overboard with layering too many products one thing is clear with rosacea is yes there is a skin barrier defect there but the symptoms of sensitivity can be made worse by applying things to the skin while it's still damp. You know, in dermatology, it's a go-to recommendation to tell patients who have, say for example, eczema, to apply moisturizers after bathing while the skin is still a bit damp. By doing this, it really optimizes the performance of the active ingredients who, again, their purpose is to suppress water loss from the skin and improve the moisture content. But in some situations, individuals find that when they do that, it's very uncomfortable. It leads to a lot of burning and stinging. This can be true for people who have uh, eczema and they're experiencing a really extreme flare where the skin is raw, red. Applying moisturizers can really sting, especially when the skin is damp. In those cases, it may be more practical to tell the patient to pat dry the area first and then apply the moisturizer so as to minimize that discomfort. Same thing can happen to people who have rosacea. I do think this routine certainly is going to be beneficial for many people who experience dry skin as it relates to winter or any other condition that can cause dry skin. However, as with everything, again, it's not going to work out for everyone. Having a couple of different hydrating serums that you layer on underneath your moisturizer, it's a, it's a reasonable approach, one I show in a lot of my skincare routine videos. I've talked about great products to do this with, but it's not necessary for everyone to do this approach. The other thing I wanna bring up is that I just kind of think it's funny that this is a trend uh, of skin flooding where the principle of layering hydrating ingredients onto damp skin, it's been around for a long time. This is a theme I'm noticing online is that I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the video, but like it seems like every couple of months there's some new trend in skincare that's essentially a reiteration of more or less the same thing. And it's like, we've been doing that for a long time, but you just come up with a buzzy name and a hashtag and now all of a sudden like, people think it's something totally novel. A lot of this actually comes from principles found in Korean and Japanese skincare. Um, this concept of layering different hydrating products like serums, toners, essences, and in order to improve moisture content, that really comes more so from Korean and Japanese skincare practices. You know, you can give something a trendy name, but in reality, it's something that's been done for a long time. So all that to say, do you need to be trying this? You can try it if you want to. Uh, you know, I've discussed the risks and benefits in this video, so it's up to you. If you want recommendations for hydrating serums and toners, I have videos on that. But do you need to drop your skincare routine and run out and buy these things? Uh, no. To what extent it's going to offer you an end result that's any different from just putting plain moisturizer on your face? Who, who's to say that it is? So remember that before getting influenced to perhaps buy more products that you may not necessarily be motivated to continue using. The problem with skincare trends like this too is that it influences people to buy products that they may not necessarily need and it's, it's fine to try out products. I enjoy skincare, I try a lot of products out but you have to re remind yourself whenever you're going to consider buying a new skincare product, what is this going to look like in my day-to-day -day life three months from now. Do I, realistically, if this, if this product doesn't cause problems for me, do I realistically see myself continuing to use it three months from now? And if the answer is no, 
then you have to ask yourself, is this new product going to get me somewhere in the next couple of months with it where I need to be faster and then I'm okay with letting go of it? Then it might be worthwhile to, to introduce, but just you know, be mindful. Times have gotten really expensive. Skincare products have gotten really expensive. So just be aware, whenever there's a new trend, proceed with caution. I hope this video was helpful to you guys in explaining this new trend of skin flooding. Let me know in the comments if you have heard about this new trend. Speaking of trends on TikTok, on the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video talking about the, well, the trend probably is out of date already by now, but uh, a buckle fat pad removal. So definitely check that video out next if you are so inclined. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.